I've had this copy of the Victorian House Coloring Book for about 25 years, so you might notice some wear and discoloration. It's not a collector's item. You can purchase one from Amazon for around $5. But these days, coloring books are a popular adult activity. Yet I haven't seen many coloring books printed on watercolor paper. What's up with that? Well, production costs, probably. So I figured it might interest some watercolorists to know that they too can join in on the fun. And in this session, I'll show you how I went about it. For this project, I chose to use Arches Hot Pressed Watercolor Paper, which is new to me. Yeah, I'm a cold pressed gal, but sometimes I like to push my boundaries, expand my horizons, broaden my scope, and not just around the waistline, for which I blame the stash of Rolos on my desk. If you haven't filled a porcelain palette with candy, then you aren't utilizing its full potential. No, I'm referring to an older video where I said I only trace my own work, which I did at the time. But just as I had to embrace the concept of stretch jeans, so too the idea that I might have been narrow-minded. Yeah, I was stoked about trying hot pressed for the first time. At least I was, until... Oh, the irony. After recently telling people to keep band-aids on hand, I didn't have a Band-Aid on hand. Well, that sure came around to bite me in the finger. Hear that? That's the sound of Sanrio character Band-Aids in a tin. It's a little late, but gosh darn it, in this at least, I'm going to practice what I preach. After selecting the page I wanted to paint, I pulled out the LED light pad that producer Mike had gotten for me last year. It's made an appearance several times since then because it's a handy tool to have around. After placing a sheet of the hot press paper on top of the image, I went at it with a Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pen in sepia. I think it was the 0.3 size. At this point, I realized that the image on the back side was showing through and complicating matters. All of that line work was challenging enough without having to distinguish a pansy border from wood scrollery. So the tracing process took longer than expected. Although I haven't done much with coloring books as an adult, I can see the appeal. Sometimes you just want the fun of coloring without all the planning and layout stuff. My process here wasn't quick, and I expect there are other ways to go about it. Perhaps printing from a digital file directly onto watercolor paper. I haven't tried it because we don't have a working printer. Look, obviously I'm not up on the latest, and a part of me is expecting to see a comment like, What rock have you been living under? These days, all coloring books are printed on 100% cotton watercolor paper. Everyone knows that.
The colors for this session are all from the Da Vinci brand of watercolors. This is the first real project I've used them on, and I think they showed really well. I ended up using three brushes, a dagger, a quarter inch stroke, and a small round. I've since been gifted a couple of new brushes that I'm excited about, and I'll share those in an upcoming video. Much of this was done with my Aqua Elite dagger, which hadn't gotten much use until now. I had fun with it. It laid down nice swaths of color, but it also got into tight areas. Each room inside this book is accompanied by descriptive text explaining the practical and aesthetic purposes behind the decor. It was first published in 1980, I believe, illustrated by Daniel Lewis and written by Kristen Helberg. I'd gotten it as a design reference rather than for coloring fun. The Victorian era consists of many architectural styles, such as Gothic Revival, Italianate, and Queen Anne. There's even one called Richardsonian Romanesque. I am not kidding. The cover of this book shows an example of the Second Empire style, but houses of the time were sometimes a mishmash of multiple styles, and I think I see some Italianate there too. I get pretty excited when seeing Victorian architecture on screen. Movies such as An Ideal Husband, Topsy Turvy, and The Prestige all represented the period very well, whereas the sets and costumes for Crimson Peak and The House with the Clock in its Walls were over the top, but still a blast. There's a blog called Hooked on Houses, and it has posts about houses of interest, whether seen on screen or being of historical note, or just a cute cottage for sale. I don't think it's as active as it once was, but it's still a neat site for anyone who's really into Arquitectura Domestica. The round porcelain mixing palette was recently given to me, and I feel as if I can now say I've got a collection going on. 
But back to the topic of Victorian styles. I've recently discovered the art tube niche of vintage junk journaling. I think that's the term. It's a lot of leather journals and old-timey ephemera, and often given the ASMR treatment. And I was thinking, I'd like to do that. But then they pull out the antique scissors and... Nope. I am not adding more sharp and pointy objects to my mix, no matter how pretty they are. The Sakurakoi brush pen comes into play here. The piece actually looked kind of cool without it, but I prefer it with the gray outline. I mean, yeah, you lose something, but you gain something too. Some people might balk at tracing, but I don't have the ability to freehand a drawing like this. I admire those who do. But who's to say these illustrations weren't traced from photos? Especially since I once had a Victorian-style book with interiors that were very similar.
I'm cringing right now because I was a savage while removing the tape and some of the paper's surface came off. I totally know better and have even explained the proper procedure more than once. Anyway, while I'm pleased with the results, I'm not sure how much I like hot press, or at least Arch's hot press. I'll have to have another go before forming a firm opinion. I enjoyed this one for sure. Admittedly, the early tracing part was tedious, but the actual painting portion was a lot of fun. But there were a lot of things I was trying out here, uh, like the Da Vinci paints and the coloring book style of line art, as well as this hot press paper. Maybe I should have focused on one of those elements, rather than tackling the trifecta. I'm so happy to share this coloring page in watercolors. Yeah, I contradicted myself several times, but let's not argue over who's being hypocritical, because I think we all learned a lesson here. So until next time, embrace the joy of trying new things, and stay artsy, my friends.